Hey, hi, it's Paul Slack. It's Good News Planet here at the Waldorf Astoria for the Ackerman Family Institute. Uh, it does a lot of good things. And we're bringing a lot more of the people that are connected to this event. It's all good. Our good friend James Grant is overseeing the public relations, and uh, it's a nice thing. Hey, your name again for the camera? Lois Braverman. Hi, Lois. How are you? I'm fine. How are you? Okay. You're excited about tonight? I'm very excited about tonight. Um, just thrilled to be representing one of the most important organizations uh, in family therapy in the world. So um, I'm hoping that um, tonight is a very successful evening. Tell us a little bit about the organization. We're the premier family therapy training institute in the United States and in the world. We do family therapy with couples and families. We uh, create cutting edge clinical research um, to help uh, couples and families and we do postgraduate training. So um, we train therapists, we do clinical work, and we do research. We're like a little, a little college. How were you created? Why were you created? We were created really because we were uh, the founder, Nathan Ackerman, was actually a rebel, uh, rebelling against the psychoanalytic community and saying that people would get better faster and more effectively and stay better longer in terms of their mental health problems if they were treated in the context of their families. Beautiful, beautiful. Thank you so much. Okay, my pleasure. And just last question, what's good news for you? What's good news? I'm not sure what the question is. What's the news for you in any aspect of your life? Um, that my children uh, are well and healthy and thrive. Beautiful, thank you. Background. Natalie's a professional. Okay. Hi, Natalie Morales. Hi, how are, how are you? you? I'm, I'm good. Great. How are thank you? you? Fantastic. You could do thank everything. You. I'm sure you could shoot. A, you could shoot a camera, right? You know what? That was my first job in television, and I shot all my own stuff, and then I'd edit it all, produce it, and we all have to start somewhere. All right. So let's switch now. Yes. So in essence, uh, you, 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 what is? Why did you do that? Why did you get into television? What was it that you liked about it? Well, you know, I think um, it's it's really the call to help people. I think you know what I do in, in news. You feel like you're offering a service, it's public service to people, and and you know I, it was a good fit for my personality. I lived all over the world, military brat, and I really wanted to tell the world story. So, the military yeah. world, uh, since we have good news, military as well. Uh, what do you think about that, in the sense of? Uh, the lifestyle and uh, the, the respect and all those good things. Oh, you know, it, for me, growing up in a military family was the most incredible education, world experience that I could possibly have, starting at a very young age. I was born in Taiwan. I lived in Panama, Brazil, Spain, um, Dover, Delaware, a couple of years stateside. So um, for me, it was an education. It opened my eyes to, to the history, to the politics, to social issues of the world. And I think that's what makes me a better journalist because I saw that early on. That's what they usually say to the soldiers. They get to see the world, but you got to see the world through through family. Absolutely. I got to see it. Thank goodness my father was a uh, career military and served a good 24 years in the, in the Air Force. So That's through hard. him, I had the opportunities that that afforded me. Uh, and tonight being here at this event, uh, tell us about it. Well, the Ackerman Institute, I was here last year as well, and I saw all the great work and, and all that they do to help support families with social services, um, offering clinical hours, psychological hours, counseling, um, regardless of people's you know need or, or disparity, if they can't afford those kinds of services, they ensure that people are getting the help they need to keep the family structure together. Because you know, the minute there's a problem in the family, well, the problem in the family breaks down the unit, it affects the community, it affects everyone. Everybody, that's no doubt about it. The family is the structure of life. Definitely. Thank you so much. Last question, what's My good pleasure. news for you? Good news for you is? Uh, good news for me is, Waking up in the morning with a positive attitude, doing a great job, and you know, representing well, being a great mom, and, and at the end of the day, putting my kids to bed and, and having a good day. You're beautiful. Thank you. Thank you. Camilla Burundi. Ah, uh, you're beautiful, and you do so many positive. And we went up to uh, uh, 100, 200 Street or something. Yeah. You're you're all around doing positive, positive things. What's I see you everywhere too, so I guess we're both doing positive things. <laughs> but we believe in supporting, uh, yeah. right? I mean, yeah. isn't that what's inside of you? Absolutely. We all have to take care of the needy and people that need us and do good works. Uh huh. Now you're, you have, uh, well, you're, I've been a model and yes. I'm a model and actor and uh, and I know you make some products too. Yes, right? I do. What I um, I have a health and beauty brand from Africa that I 
import and sell here in New York City currently and soon to be available everywhere. Um, it's called African Moringa. So. Uh -huh. And what kind of products are in the line? <laughs> uh, it's a green superfood and a cosmetic oil that makes you so beautiful as for now, but soon there will be more, I yeah. promise. They're, they're really high on this green the superfoods. So, so like, what would that mean? Uh, what kind of a, a food would be? They're in just it? green foods that give you like all your nutrients that you need and antioxidants, polyphenols, lots of scientific stuff that's really good for your body, keeps you healthy and uh, useful. Oh, well, and here's an example of. I'm going to take a long shot of you because uh, you're. Uh, you're gorgeous. All right, what's good news for you tonight? Good news tonight is we're here for the Ackerman um, Institute and we're here to support them tonight. And it's such a wonderful cause and I'm so glad to be a part of it. Beautiful, thanks again. Thank you so much, great to see you. Okay, your name for the camera? It is Greg Rogers. Hey Greg, how are you? I'm doing great. Thank Congratulations, you. being honored this evening. Thank you very much. How do you feel Having about that? I feel fantastic. It's a, Ackerman's doing some great things, uh, some real grassroots work with families across the uh, the city and, and impacting the world, and it's uh, really fantastic to be a part of it. Obviously, you must be doing some great things. What are some of the kinds of things you're doing? Well, a part of the partnership award uh, that I'm getting tonight from Ackerman is really about how Ackerman supports our work with families. So we work with family businesses, and we work with families directly, as well as wealth advisory firms who work with families, and Ackerman supports a lot of the, the family dynamics activities that go on in the, in the day to day act, uh, work that we do with families. So, and how do you help those families? Oh, wow. We uh, facilitate all sorts of uh, communications within a family uh, from succession planning in an operating business to design of a family office to working across generations uh, regarding education and, uh, and family history. Beautiful. It's all about the family, right? Absolutely. Absolutely. It's the, it's the foundation of great society. So, No doubt about it. Last about. question. What's good news for you? Uh, good news for you is, for me, is uh, my family's here, my parents, my brother, uh, my brothers, my wife, and my son, uh, and it's just fun to celebrate it with them. Beautiful. Thank you so much. I'm here with Marie Wilson. Hi, Marie. How are you? I'm wonderful. Thank you. Marie's done so many wonderful things. We've interviewed you for Ms. We've interviewed you for Epic, the White House. And uh, so let's talk about grandkids. Okay. Because we're at a family event. <laughs> Well, I tell you what, I've got a big family. I've got five kids and 11 grandkids, and I actually have never been as happy as I am right now because I am not traveling, I'm not having to raise money, and I have twins that are two years old. It's two babies, and I can hardly, I want to eat them. <laughs> I can understand uh, having two grandkids myself. So the, the wonderment about having family and then yes. having this extended family yes. It, uh, for the lo those that are that lucky, it'll uh, keep us young for a, a long, long time, won't it? That's right. But you've got to bend down a lot. Well, I think what happened, and what has happened actually with this economic decline, is that people have understood now how important family is. I mean, men are more actually interested in having money, our time, than money right now. Uh, many of them, actually 53% of them, because there's a kind of like, hey, this ain't getting me anywhere, so. Well, I'm reading actually a book, and the book is about being happy, and it, yeah. it, it gives a actually a religious background to Philippians uh, about how if you stick with the family and then work yeah. your way out from that, and those close to you, uh, your success and happiness will be uh, a large. You know, I think that's true. I mean, not everybody has that experience, right. but I think in terms of who we are, I wouldn't say it's just family. I think it's family and extended community, and that that's what keeps people resilient and healthy and happy. And if you have good work, that's great, but if you have good work and that community is not there, it isn't enough. I hear you. Last question, what's good news for you? Oh, what's good news for me? I think the election is going our way, <laughs> and that means... A, a democratic election, I'll be very clear. <laughs> yeah, it would really be good. We do have a record number of women running. It's, to me, it isn't a lot, but it's a record number, and that's the good news. All right, let me, I will only ask you this because you have been so involved with this. Yeah. And to have that woman in the office uh, running the country, when? Uh, in, probably in the next election. I wouldn't be surprised in the next one or the next one. Because there are a lot, there are actually some interesting people out there. I don't know if Hillary will win, but that's always an issue. 
but there's some really interesting women out there. Kristen Gillibrand, Camilla Harris, I mean, really good women. Beautiful. Thanks, Marie. Thank you. Thank you. I'm, I'm, I'm here with the president of the Institute, <laughs> Lois Ackerman, who is happy as can be, and Marie Wilson. And, and she says to me, Maurice mentions that you guys are oldest, youngest friends. How did that all come about? And congratulations, isn't that a Because we're at a family event, right, and the family and friends, and, the, uh, and I wanted to make sure that we got this on tape. So how'd you stay friends all these years? We met in 1976 in Des Moines, Iowa. And uh, Marie and my husband at that time were doing male-female communication workshops. And he came home and he said to me, I met a woman you're going to fall in love with. And he introduced me, and it was absolutely true. Actually, what he said to me is, you look like a woman who would take care of me, but you won't. You should meet my wife. <laughs> it was wonderful. No, Lois and I did fall in love in, in, in a wonderful friendship way. And um, we, have, we worked in, in Des Moines for years together on things. And then uh, the opportunity came for her to come here. We know our, each other's children. We know each other's mother and fathers. Um, we had a long friendship. Did you go to that Orpheum Theater? Isn't that in Des Moines? Or maybe I'm off here. No. I don't think Orpheum is in <laughs> no. Des Moines. No. No, okay, no. I missed that one. No. All right, so in any case, and this will continue on for on and on and on. Yes. Well, I yeah, understand. we can't afford, you can't lose friends at my age. <laughs> you gotta keep all your friends. You get to a certain point where you don't discard friends, and I would never discard this one. She picks out my clothes. <laughs> This is, a, this is a wise comments that are coming. Think about these, everybody. These are very wise comments. No, I agree what? with that, too. I agree. I got to go my college buddy, and I, I do anything to make sure we do not lose our friendship. That's right. I, I wanted to also say that friendships are the um, special sauce, the hidden glue that actually keeps people's families' life rich and, and lively. And um, right. they're a very, very important part of people's mental health. And they're a very, very important part of stabilizing people's right. relationships, family relationships. So um, they're often overlooked. And um, actually, all of the studies show that um, people that have long-lasting, important friendships in their life do well through old age. And that's what we intend to do. <laughs> this is as good news as good news gets. Are you confidants with each other? Absolutely. We talk every day. Every day. We, we call each other day. every morning. Yeah. We don't need coaches. I can make, you know, I made, a, coaches. I made a soap opera. We could just go right here, right now. <laughs> no, this is all beautiful. Thank you very much. Thank you. That's kind of you to share. Okay. Hi, Cheryl. How are you? Hi, nice to see you. How'd you get into broadcasting? I got into broadcasting, graduated from Syracuse University, worked at Fox 5 coming out of school as a news assistant, and then they started this new concept in television called New York One. 20 years ago, we're celebrating our big anniversary, actually this 20 Friday. 20 years, 20 years. 20 years, I've been there from the beginning, and we had no idea what was going to become of it. All the television stations didn't think we would last, and now, lo and behold, we're a New York City institution. You sure are. Actually, we're partners with you. Yes, I know uh, that. Good news, and uh, uh, working on the New Yorker of the Week. Oh, yes, program. absolutely. And uh, it's really... Uh, a, a tribute, it's a real statement, and I, I, there's a lot of uh, kindness that your station shares. Yes, and you know that's deliberate. We do not focus on the awful things going on in the city or sensationalize them. We report them responsibly, but we really prefer reporting on what everyday hardworking New Yorkers are doing and not necessarily blowing up the bad news. So I'm very proud to work there because of that. And I can understand that. And there's a lot of talented, I just will say that since I'm a former CBS guy, and a lot of the uh, CBS execs came over to New York one and are running that place. That's right, Paul Sagan is right. one of the founders. My buddy Tom Farkas, I'll throw Tom something Tom Farkas, out there. Steve Paulus, absolutely. We were formed with the seeds of CBS, and we've upheld the standards of CBS News as well. So it's been a wonderful relationship, and now we're off on our own. We're almost legal. <laughs> <laughs> last, last question. What's good news for you? Oh, good news is being here and celebrating families and the great work of the Ackerman Institute. We recently profiled them on New York One, so it's so nice to be here and celebrate with them. Beautiful. Thanks so much.